All right, so let's keep uh, moving on in chapter six. We're still looking at a history of marriage in the United States. Uh, in the 1970s, families began to change and diversify. Parents spent more time with their families, better pay was one of the results, more leisure time, and improved housing. Uh, gender roles became more flexible and birth control and changes in sexuality and sexual behavior took shape. Now, this is kind of predictable because in the 1970s, we're really um, just experiencing a new reality uh, post many of the civil rights uh, movements that happened in the 1960s. Many social groups that uh, didn't have power in the past now had power. Um, we were seeing a diversity within relationships take shape interracial marriages, um, uh, gay unions, of course there weren't marriages at that time, but um, the family really began to uh, move away from the nuclear family that uh, defined the 1950s and early 1960s. But then we run headfirst into the 1980s. In the 1980s, a couple of things happened in the 1980s. We experienced a, uh, a white backlash to much of the social progress of the 1960s and 1970s. Um, a reassertion of the ideals of the nuclear family and as we see, many people agree that the traditional family or that nuclear family is ideal. However, it's really based on nostalgia and um, and certainly varies culturally. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the, the, the nuclear family or the traditional family was predominantly white Anglo-Saxon Protestant. Um, we get diversity in the family form when we start uh, looking out into other cultural groups and ethnic groups uh, and racial groups in our, our society. Um, so the 80s brought some changes, as I made mention to. Uh, we see a dramatic withdrawal of public supports for the institutions of marriage. Um, one, economically, we see a decreased uh, and depressed set of wages as we move into globalization and the United States begins to lose some of its economic uh, dominance. Uh, we see our real wages, especially middle class, working class, and poor wages uh, decrease. This of course makes us have to work longer. So the leisure time that we gained in the 1970s, um, is lost in the 1980s, uh, drawing the father away from home, um, pushing the mother into the workforce uh, even more than she might already be there, and then creating that uh, infamous second shift where the mother's working and then having to do most of the housework at home. Um, we see a decreased amount of money going to public housing, which in turn uh, puts an extra pressure on poor folks to go out and work more, which takes them away from the family. Uh, restrictions on birth control, uh, the rise of the religious right in the United States during the 1980s and the 1990s, and their, um, their attempts to regain control of a, a woman's right to choose uh, really impact how uh, birth rates uh, are uh, increasing or decreasing in the United States, and especially um, one of the predominant problems of early childhood births, um, young teenagers having children, um, it, it's, it's a problem. And then, of course, the new abortion laws. Um, ultimately, this means that uh, the median age of marriage goes up, the number of children declines, as the economic pressures on a family make it harder and harder to have more children, single, single parent households increase. 
divorce rates increase and cohabitation becomes one of the predominant forms of um, of the family more so than marriage. So as we move through time, marriage changes. The cultural definition of a marriage where a woman lands a man, of course, she wants it, he has to be coerced, is um, maybe that's just a, a myth. The reality of it uh, uh, might just be different. We see this when we look at the benefits and the um, the benefits that one group receives from marriage over another. Uh, when you look at the data, you can clearly see men benefit from marriage more than women do. Married men report greater happiness than single men. Unmarried women report greater happiness than uh, married women. Married men report a higher status or a higher satisfaction with life men remarry quicker married men report better health than single men widows live longer than widowers so men are getting way more from the marriage than they're leading on to and uh in the end, women are probably not getting as much as it's said that they receive from marriages. But don't get me wrong, marriage uh, has its benefits. Married people have more sex. They have longer life expectancies. Lower levels of risky behavior. Lower levels of suicide and depression. So, Marriage is a mixed bag. It's not just um, uh, bad. It's it's good as well, and um, and as I said, it's changing as we move forward in time. Um, this brings us to housework and and childcare. So, what happens when there are more women in the workforce? Well, first off, women report that they have less levels of stress than men do when they go to the workforce. Um, women, uh, of course, are faced with the conundrum, which should create a little bit more stress in their lives, of the second shift where after work they've got to come home and take care of the house and the kids. Um, as we mentioned, as we move forward in time, uh, the younger generations are sharing more of the responsibilities uh, equally within the family than they have historically. Um, and as, uh, as equality and egalitarianism begin to once again permeate the family, we'll see a greater satisfaction and um, uh, more shared responsibility between men and women within the family household. Uh, men's family roles, of course, are changing. Um, they're, they're still being required to up the amount of housework that they're doing, but they certainly aren't doing as much as, as women are. Uh, Two-thirds of the household work is still done by women, uh, and if there is a decrease in the amount of household or in the amount of work that the woman has to do on the second shift, it's because that, um, that work's no longer being done as it was in the past. Turns out men don't mind having a dirty house if they don't have to clean it. Um, there's always a differentiation between household types of work the woman's uh, domain is inside the kitchen the laundry room bedrooms bathrooms the man's domain is outside the basement garage trash cars yard 
grilling outside, that's a man's thing. So gender in the household still exists, but it's changing. And as the genders converge, you're going to see less and less of a differentiation in doing these types of works. We also know that mothers spend more time with children than fathers do, not because fathers don't want to spend time with their children, but um, because the, uh, the work requirements that a father has tend to demand that he is in the workplace whereas um, the work requirements that women have are less demanding that they are in the workplace and um, uh, leaving them with more opportunity to be inside the home, experiencing life with their children. American men's rates of participation is lower than in any industrialized nations. So our men participate in the raising of their children less than any other industrialized nation. This is going to have to change as we move forward. Uh, many men are unwilling to make sacrifices at work, sacrifices that are for the family. Therefore, uh, they continue to be uh, uh, separate from, apart from the family. And if the family is going to work in the 21st century, working families are going to need structural macro level supports. These, the institutions and the organizations of our government are going to have to create family friendly workplace policies, uh, things like paternity leave. You can almost guarantee that a corporation is not going to willingly do this, or at least corporations across the board are not going to willingly do this. This is going to have to come from some sort of legislation, government mandates that require companies working in the United States to provide these types of services or increase our taxes and create them within the government. Um, uh, one way or another, we're going to have to be more considerate of both males and females within the family structure. Uh, there's also a series of constructed problems that come out of the family. These problems might not have existed in the past, but as we move into a, um, a complex society in the United States in the 20th, 21st century, uh, we see problems take shape that are a direct result of how we interact within our society, especially economically. Daycare, the need for daycare, the cost of daycare. If any of you have children, you understand what I'm saying. Daycare is expensive. If you're going to be, especially if you're a single parent, um, if you're going to be out of the household working, someone has to take care of your children and that someone is going to be paid a significant amount of money. Uh, first off, the financial burden that it creates on a family is problematic. And secondly, the um, uh, the removal of the parent from parenting is problematic as well. 